check this out. Ceramics are solids, but we can shape them in a liquid. If we add a tiny amount of the correct additive, notice how the viscosity drops tremendously. 3D Alchemy So welcome to our lab of additive manufacturing. Today we're going to share with you some details about the 3D printing process stereolithography. We're going to dive into the details about the process itself, the materials we use, and um, share with you some uh, insightful information. Let's go. Ceramics are solids, but we can shape them in a liquid. How do we do that? Well, we do it by using stereolithography. Stereolithography sounds like a complex name, but it's actually quite simple. And it was one of the first additive manufacturing processes ever invented. And it remains widely used today. It's the 3D printing technology that uses a process of layer-by-layer -layer photopolymerization to create three-dimensional objects from digital models. Photopolymerization is a chemical process in which liquid monomers or polymers are converted into solid materials using light energy. Here's how the stereolithography process works. First, we prepare a 3D digital model of the desired object using computer-aided design software, or CAD for short. Then, the digital model is sliced into thin horizontal layers using a slicing software, like this one you see me using here. Each layer, by the way, is a 2D cross-section of the final object we want to create. Once the model is ready, we can head to the printer. A liquid photopolymer resin, which is filled with ceramic particles, is poured into the vat. This resin is sensitive to blue and UV light. And the moment it's exposed to the light, it turns from a liquid to a solid. Now, the build platform is lowered by a fraction of the layer height and a projector is used to expose the photopolymer resin to blue light. This blue light causes the resin to solidify or polymerize. In order to selectively mask the blue light, an LCD screen is usually used. The LCD screen consists of an array of tiny pixels each capable of being individually controlled to block or transmit the light. Once the first layer is solidified, the vat tilts to detach the polymerized layer and the platform goes up by a distance of one additional layer. The process of photopolymerization then repeats for each subsequent layer. And the newly solidified layer adheres to the layer above it until a 3D object is formed. Knowing that we have ceramic particles suspended in the resin, we often use a pump to circulate the resin and keep those particles from sedimenting or sinking to the bottom of the vat, because this can ruin the print. Also, we integrate heating elements into the vat to increase its temperature and to reduce the viscosity of the resin. Because a resin with a lower viscosity flows much better and it can fill up the space of a new layer much faster. Now, even though we have all these sophisticated equipment, we still rely on chemistry, basic organic chemistry, to create a ceramic filled resin that can actually be printed. 
For example, this is a resin in the making. Check this out. Before adding any additives, the resin is so thick that it looks almost like a gel. Well, needless to say, this resin will not flow and it cannot be printed. Now, if we add a tiny amount of the correct additive, notice how the viscosity drops tremendously in a fraction of seconds. And now this resin flows and it can be printed. Cool, right? Additives are one tool we use to create successful resins. There are, of course, many other factors that affect the printability of the resins, and we, together, are going to explore them one by one. So, stay tuned. <laughs>